The very first night, 6th of October 2006, within the first hour, my mobile was like ringing in my hand as it was going and going and going. And it was the governor from Strangeways Prison next door. He said, we can't operate there ever again. I really don't think that there's anywhere else that could compare to this. It has such a unique magic about it. It's become a kind of destination for people to want to play. It's become a rite of passage for DJs to, to go through. Manchester is one of my favorite places to begin with. I mean, I literally just stepped up. And it was just like the vibe is there. I'm like, oh, wow, this is going to be fun. For the people who come to Welsh, was it really understand music. The, the set you play here, it has to count. It's probably like the most important one of the year. Warehouse Project influences clubs and festivals all around the world. This is a leader event. They have that vibe. Walk around, I meet random people in the crowd and everybody's so positive. It's quite a special thing. I'd been working at a club called Sankey's in Manchester as the promoter. That had kind of run its natural course, really. Um, and I was sat up very, very late one night with Crisco. I think it was the end of a long weekend. I just remember thinking, well, at Sankey's, the last three months of the year were always great. What if we just operated in that specific period? Like we found like a disused non-club and we could call it the Warehouse Project. Sam thought the name, I didn't like the name, but it grew on me. When we announced the lineup, we still hadn't announced the venue. The reason we didn't announce the venue is because we didn't have one. I think we actually Googled an image of a warehouse that looked quite cool. It didn't exist. Sam was showing it to the agent, this look, and they were, oh, that's amazing, we need to play it, that or that. So my job was to go and find a cool looking warehouse, which was Boddington's Brewery. I thought 45 parties. Anyway, he got carried away, didn't he? And he booked 24 of them. And we had to sell 100,000 tickets. Sasha said to me, look, we're going to do these shows. Are you up for it? And I thought, you're completely mental. The Mode Selector guys always say that when they first turned up at Boddington's, it was the worst gig they'd ever done. And we didn't even give them a table to set their gear up on. Um, <laughs> we were kind of out of our depth. If now I'd looked at taking on what we did in 2006, there's not a chance I would have done that. You know, me, Sam, Rich, we risked our homes on it. And we walked in the door of that first night at Boddington's with Public Enemy playing. I just remember looking at Sam thinking like, this is going to explode. Boddington's was a baptism of fire for all of us. When we did announce that it was going to be at Boddington's, it just kind of went bang. We were given the full license by the police, by environmental health. Everybody thought, yeah, great, it's not in the centre of town, they're not going to cause any issues. The prison was literally right next door, and it's like, I heard you're holding a party next door. It's like, yeah, I am. What time do you close? Well, I'll actually close tonight at two o'clock. But yeah, but we're on again tomorrow night. It's like, what do you mean? I said, well, we're doing this for 12 weeks now. He said, well, the whole prison is raving. The base was leaking from the roof. It was only a corrugated roof. None of us thought about this. Apparently the drugs rocketed in the prison. We were getting letters in the office from prisoners saying it was great last Saturday, been on the website. Have you got a CD? We just thought this is crazy. So Sam and I got into his mini, drove around the whole of Manchester, around Greater Manchester, looking for somewhere. Store Street was a lucky find. It was operating as a car park Monday to Friday. Our original plan for that venue was just to do one weekend. We assumed that to do a whole season there wouldn't work. But actually, after we did that first weekend, we figured out the logistics to, to make it work. By the time we left, it was like running a bath. She had it transform from like a simple parking lot to this monster club and and you know just knowing like a few hours later it's going to be back into like some kind of parking garage it's like the strangest thing it's the most efficient thing i've ever seen in my life and for it to happen every week that's even more incredible i remember the first time i went to store street and i was like what is this this is a car park are we all in a car park right now like i was quite taken aback it just transforms into this amazing space that is intimate, but at the same time, it's breathable. This will always be a unique, magical place in its own right that, in my opinion, cannot be compared to anywhere else. I've known the team for over a decade. They put a lot of blood and sweat and tears into making it a really exciting and progressive 
thing. You know, they could easily just rest on their laurels and stay in the same venue and do the same thing every year, but they try and switch it up and they try and evolve it. I think they've turned it into something that they should be really proud of. I remember going into Manchester with my parents and being in the back of their car and mithering them to drive past the Hacienda so I could look at all the weird people in the queue. Anyone who grew up in Manchester at that time, it was kind of all around you. So it's a, a huge part of the fabric of the city. And I think that is the pressure that we feel is to try and keep it moving forward and forward thinking and not to do anything that's run of the mill or been done a million times before. Those institutions like Factory and the Hacienda, they were unique. We always wanted the warehouse project to be cut from the same cloth. So after five years at Store Street, we were kind of getting itchy feet. Victoria Warehouse came along at the right moment and we decided to give it a go. We were looking for a bigger venue. They ended up just not being the right one. So we went back to Store Street for a couple of years and it was a glorious return back to Store Street at the time. We were only ever really biding our time to get into Mayfield. Mayfield Depot is their most ambitious project yet. I think the excitement when it launched felt really tangible, like around the whole of UK club culture. It felt like a big deal. It feels like a festival. To me, when I got there, it reminded me of Sonar. That kind of huge, vast venue, of aircraft hangar sized space. Uh, and the kind of level of, of, of artists that they had as well. It feels ambitious. This opportunity at Mayfield Depot, it, it kind of dwarfs everything that's come before it. It's just a complete game changer. Mayfield, it's incredible. When you're walking around, you've got the main room, 6,000 people, the concourse, the archive. It's a monster. It's quite a unique experience. It's about the sound and everything else that goes along with throwing a good pie. And they nail it. And they gave me the biggest, fattest rider ever. She came in with like a JCB truck with like champagne, gin, vodka. I forgot the question now, what's the question? <laughs> I think the approach with artwork for the warehouse project is very much summarized by the logo. We wanted something that felt very futuristic and completely detached from old Manchester. There was a lot of noise in Manchester that all of the best things were behind us. One thing we were adamant about was that every aspect of the warehouse project should feel brand new. So whether that was the logo, the style of the curation. When Warehouse Project released their lineups, it's actually an event. It's like a film coming out or a music video or an album. I think the curation behind the lineups has always been really like one of their strongest points. A lot of the time they give our like artists the keys to the club. And as a result, it kind of opens up different networks. They always give good support to sort of up and coming people as well as the more established DJs and I think it's a, it's a good reference point for people to see what's going on in club culture. One of the guys has come through the ranks with my crew, Patrick Topping, you know, they gave him his own night this year and it sold out straight away and they've been done that with lots of different people um, over the years. Young artists and new artists are getting put in front of massive, massive audiences and that really pushes them on because you can't always be playing tiny clubs at the beginning, it, it kind of speeds up the process to be given a platform like that. It's really important that places like the Warehouse Project exist to put left field club culture on a big stage. I went and got into my music by going to soul weekenders that were made for thousands of people, but I'd find the room at the back that was playing weird stuff and interesting stuff to my ears. But I wouldn't have got there if it hadn't been for the big events being there in the first place. So for me, this is a really great open door for people to kind of discover all sides of dance music. I think Warehouse Project is all about supporting the underground, whether that's underground club culture or, you know, putting on shows that uh, sort of provide spaces for niches. It's done it really well, but it does it in an accessible way. So you have a mainstream crowd that come to these places to be educated, but to also be entertained as well. The curation of the Warehouse Project is constantly evolving, and it's taken its biggest kind of quantum leap since we moved to Mayfield. The reward of seeing a venue full of people going absolutely mental and loving the experience that you've curated, that's the thing that keeps you going. The whole pandemic was a crazy time for the Warehouse Project. You know, looking back at it now, um, it's easy to forget the intensity 
of the anxiety that we were going through, as people were, you know, in all walks of life, I suppose. But I think as soon as that started to fade, then all there was was anticipation for the return. The appetite for customers to come back is phenomenal. You can feel the, the, the pent-up readiness to party again. And I think this is more than just a party. I think this is a, a great relief for people's mental health. It's just so nice to be back. Yeah, it feels good to be back. And you know what's great about being back is that we just appreciate it more. We're not going to take it for granted again. You can't underestimate the feeling of being, you know, in an audience and having a shared experience with people. And I don't think you can underestimate for the performers and for the artists what it means for them. I know definitely, you know, for me it's kind of felt like therapy at times. So to be back out there and back on the stage and to kind of have a place to express myself has been, you know, you can't even quantify it. The Warehouse Project to me is almost like a living, breathing thing. It expands as needed, contracts as needed with an incredible knack of bringing all different types of artists together but have it make sense and do it in a really intelligent way and, and I think in a way that benefits the artists and the audience. That's a gift for the city. And I think it might take a wee while or like even years before we really realize just how important it's been. The Warehouse Project is run by people that have experienced it both as promoters, but more importantly, as fans on the dance floor, as DJs, as people that have spent their life immersed in club culture. The people in the suits at the top really understood. So every time we've gone to them with a crazy idea, like we want to put some parties on in a car park, or we want to open up a brewery again, it's just made a lot of people redundant. They've always supported that. We're lucky to be in this city. We know that this isn't going to be around forever, but for as long as opportunities like Store Street, like Mayfield keep presenting themselves, then we're going to keep putting it all on black, keep taking that risk.